All right, welcome to part two. Part two, we're gonna color this book. It is sped up a little bit, so I'll probably be talking a little bit faster, but I'll try to make sure I get my brush settings and all those things in there for you. So I'm gonna hit play, and we can just go over what happens here. What I'm doing is I'm using my line art to make selections. Fill that in purple. Using the lasso tool to go in here and catch any corners, any spots that I miss. See those little bitty, little bitty corners and stuff. We want to get all those in. This is being filled in on a body base layer. I'm also going through and cleaning up any bits that I see in the line art as well. Like so. Clean out that window there. Working on the fender wells here. I put those on a separate layer. I just added just a little dark, just painted a little dark in there. Just to see it a little bit better. Now we're going to do the coloring of the rims. That's why I saved those ellipses from the line art, because I can use them to make selections. I fill them in blue and kind of that light blue is always my base chrome color. A really great car artist, Greg Tedder, rest in peace, told me to always have three colors in your chrome. So I'll do a base blue and then I'll paint black and white over that, which gives me three colors. There's a running board. This is my rubber layer. So I'm just filling in the, just the flat colors. And I make a separate layer for all the parts of the car. This is an interior piece. See, I call that layer window, window inner. Is that what I called it? Yeah. This is my limb tenon ball layer. So I'm just putting in the flat tones. Thinking it'd be an orange ball. I do a tan color for the hat. Separate layer for the lenses. And just put in the flat orange color for there. Here I went through and I put in the stuff for the actual window itself. Eventually, I'm going to fix all that, though, you'll see, because right about here, I was told that this has cow look windows, so I had to go back to my line art layer, erase all of that, grab the pen tool, and kind of change the shape, and I'm just erasing all that out. Made it a selection, deleted it off of my line art layer and my, my blue line layer same thing for this side because this window has just one piece opening here I'm fixing the shape for the for the rear part of the window we're gonna come back and visit this later on in this video though because I do have to fix all that because it's just not right just cleaning out those other lines and anywhere where I had filled in color or anything Thing. That was a quick look at the channel right there so I can make sure, okay, all my glass is set. For my glass, I create a new layer and use a gradient tool, kind of brush in some colors there. So I get that good glass look. And that glass layer is above my line art layer. So I locked the transparency on the body base layer and created a layer above it. And now I'm just painting in some of the darks, making some selections and I'm just lightly painting it in right now. I just want to kind of indicate where it's going to be and just going along, just kind of brushing it in lightly. I don't know if you'll be able to see 
that much of a difference here. But as we continue in the rendering process, you will definitely be able to see what's going on there. And I take the approach where I just, I build up my tones slowly. Here I'm brushing in the darks. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna work on the top part of the car now. Got that selected out. Brushing in some darks here. My brush, the flow was set to 3%, I think. Now I'm doing just some of the flat light colors. And this is on a, another layer that's above my, my body base. So I'll do the darks on one and the lights on another initially, but I, I tend to merge them later on in the process. Here I'm just brushing in some of the lights and kind of where I think they're gonna be or where they're gonna kind of fall. It helps to have some kind of reference. There I added a levels adjustment layer and a hue and saturation one at the top of my line. You'll see the importance of that later. Now we're brushing in some of the tires. Once again, there's a layer above my tire base layer that has the transparency locked. And I'm painting that on that layer. good I'm doing the rear tire same thing with my flow is at 7% right now for my brush and just taking my time kind of brushing it in leaving some little bits of light here and there it's looking pretty good now I made a selection that is just the dark tones so I can punch them up just a little bit more That's kind of working on my horizon line. Now I'm going right above that with my lighter color. That's gonna really help the help the horizon line to stand out. And for the horizon line, I just kind of start on one end of the car and just kind of go all the way through. There you go. So I'm just punching up the light right there where the where the dark part meets. I changed my brush to something a little more artsy, just to get a little texture in there. But the flow was still pretty low. I think it's at five. So you see, as we continue to go over it and go over it, we're just slowly building up our tones. And you can see how the how the whole drawing, how the whole light and darks, so how all those things start to work together. Now I've isolated this just a little bit and what I'm doing is I'm working on smoothing out those colors on that front fender and then deciding where the real hard emphasis is going to be. Here I'm brushing in some more darks and lights on the hood. I want it to be a little bit lighter there after my my windshield reflection area. So I'm just taking my time, painting it slow. Sampling some of the colors that I've already used and then brushing them, brushing them in. more horizon work. That's the inner edge of the of the hood. The same thing on the other side. And back into the middle. And you can see I just go back and forth, back and forth. Keep checking to see where it's at and kind of where I want it to go. Sampling the colors that have already been used, but now giving them a little more emphasis and working on that edge right there. 
I want that to kind of match where the fender is. Now we're doing the, this is the driver's side fender because it's right hand drive. <coughs> Excuse me. I like to get nice and dark underneath the headlights. Creates a nice shadow there. Same thing here, we're just going along finding areas that's going to be darker down there so I'm going to do the dark but then there's also going to be a little tiny edge of light that's on there so I want to indicate that as well and you'll see when I get to when I turn on my adjustment layers you'll see how the color really punches up the levels adjustment and the hue and saturation adjustment are are really important. Always put them at the top and use them to really punch up the colors throughout my rendering. Here I'm brushing some light on the roof area. I'm still deciding if I want to keep my, my white hot spots, but if not, I can just paint them out again. We're coming underneath the, the window edge now. So you got some darks in there. Cause that part would be in shadow. But I brush a real thin, real thin light edge right there to help give it some depth. To fix my selection there. There we go. So I can get that, just that soft edge of light right there. Follow it on around, it's pretty good. Same thing for that front window. You know, dark one side, light the other side. I adjust the levels on that layer just to check it out. Here I'm gonna do some chrome work. I did use a style to get the basics of the chrome. But now I'm going through on the on the chrome layer and painting and painting it in more accurately or a way that fits better with the actual cartoon itself. The styles are neat to use sometimes because it it's kind of a shortcut. It helps save some time just to get some some chrome looking colors and stuff in there and then you can go back and paint over them. Make some adjustments to save time. We're going to work on the bumper. Here's where I'm painting in some of the blacks and some of the whites, but see I let some of that blue show through. Then I'm going to paint in, this is my dark horizon line in there, just a general shape. And once again, kind of look at the reference, but since it's cartoon, it doesn't have to be exact. I brush a little bit of light on the bottom too. It helps really make it look like chrome. Yeah, it's pretty good. You can see now by going over it and over it, things are really starting to come out. All the colors and the, and the shapes are starting to come out, but I do want to blend them together some more so it's a little bit smoother when everything's all said and done but so far so good i still consider this the the flats i'm putting in flats here but i just kind of move into doing the details um, as i go along here after i get those those main flats done now i'm coming back and really painting in some of the highlights some of the shadows gonna work on the rest of the bumper now and just follow your chrome plan if you start doing your chrome one way just do it the way on all on all the surfaces the, just do the same thing on all the surfaces 
there goes my darks for my horizon a little bit of light above it and then a little bit of cast light down at the bottom oh, sorry if you can hear that airplane we're near the base so for the turn signals same kind of thing just follow my plan I got my my dark horizon line put in my lights there's my little my little highlight down at the bottom and you can see how by having the style in there the chrome style in there it just helps save a little bit of time and once it's done it creates a really interesting look same thing here on the side mirror And just brushing these in, um, I don't know, what's the opacity at? Or the flow is like at about eight. And every piece of the chrome, go through and just apply the same chrome plan to them. There's my darks, there's my lights that are going on the other side. And there's my little rim light or extra light on the bottom or whatever you want to call it. driver's side mirror same thing pretty good now it's really starting to come along there is an area that I'm going to have to fix here though we've talked about that that rear window post just isn't working so now I'm just brushing in some soft tones on the seats adjusting the color of the glass I was thinking about putting some dark streaks in the windows themselves, but then I just went with the gradient kind of thing. I was gonna streak the glass like that, but I I kind of like the the more the circular highlight thing. Steering wheel. Here's where we're gonna go ahead and fix that post. It's been at the wrong angle since the line art stage, but here I went in, made a selection, lined it up the way I wanted it right here you raced out any of that other stuff there now that looks much better we're gonna do the chrome for the antenna ball here it's on your on the antenna did a little shading on the antenna ball itself and ultimately I think I ended up changing the color of the antenna ball to like a purple or something like that anyway but since it's on its own layer it's easy to just adjust the color went ahead and did some shadowing on the hat there's a little rim light working on the outside just got a little bit of light put a shadow over the whole thing over the face now we're gonna do the rims and same kind of thing you're just following your chrome plan and you can really see here how the blue that I put in as the base color, after you add the tones and stuff, there's still that, that hint of blue that comes through and that's what helps give it that real chrome look. Once again, there's my dark horizon line. There's my lights on top. for the inner part right there. There we go. Looks good. I'm brushing in some more lights on the rim just to help give it some more pop. It's feeling pretty good. The Will Well shadow is important. I create that on a layer above everything and I just do like a black gradient in there and what that does is it helps to sink the rim underneath the fender that's an important part i notice i forgot a level for the inside of the rim here so i'm going to add that line now and then i'm going to knock it out and then go ahead and render it just so it has a little more depth I'm doing that above my line art layer, 
then I combine it with my line art layer after I get all those pieces out. There, clean all those out. Merge them down. Now I can select that area and knock it out. Now I have that. That's the, the depth of the rim. And now I'm just brushing in the colors and stuff for that. Just to help it sink down. A little light in there too. Pretty good. Lug nuts. Same thing, just kind of follow your chrome plan. And while you're in there, go ahead and catch any of the little corners that, that need to be caught or need to be fixed. Gradient, there's my black. I'm going to put a little bit of white. A little rim light or cast light. I don't know what they call that exactly. There we go. And so even the lug nuts, the smallest parts, they still follow the actual chrome plan. And a little detail now, really punching up the areas that, that need to be punched up. Making some, some good hard whites in there. Yeah, that's pretty good. Come in here and really, see now I'm really getting the darks on that side of that spoke. Drawing in some shapes. And blending a little, but not, not too much. It's looking pretty good. Add my whites, but still, once again, you can still see that blue is is still coming through there, which is great. And it's going to be the same for every spoke. Getting my darks in. Here comes a light. On this one, I decided to change how I had the light and stuff set up. You'll see here in just a second. Come through and I'm catching those bits of the spoke, but I wanted something that kind of went across the face of it, so. You'll see, there we go. Brushed in that light. When I turn off my pencil layer, you can really see how it's all coming together. Refining that shape a little bit. And got rid of those specks. I don't. I don't think I. For some reason, I skipped over the headlights in this one. But I'll. I'll, I'll talk about that in a in another video or the next video. What I. What I do there. It's kind of a combination of an actual photo, but also um, painting over it and getting it to sit in and look cartoony, but also semi-real. Here I applied a style to the, to the lip of the rim. And I found something that kind of worked for me or that I liked. And then after I settle on that style, then I'll go in and a layer above it and paint over so it really fits. I had a hard time deciding which one to go with here, but I think I ended up settling on something right around here somewhere. That's good.
And then I go back in and paint over it. Adjusted the levels a little bit on that. Now I'm painting in a little bit of white so you can see that. For the rear rim, it's just like the front rim. Put in some darks, kind of find out where the shapes are. Following the same chrome formula. Highlights. You can still see some of that blue underneath, which I really like. And just going back and forth, I think the flow on my brush now is at something about 10, 10% or something like that. But I, I rarely go over 10. Most of the time I'm, I'm in that five, seven range, probably because I'm a little heavy handed, but you know, that works for me. Getting the inner parts of the rim. This is the little depth part that I added in the line art stage because it's at a different angle, so I wanted that. Lug nuts. You know, and it just, it, it takes time. I think the total time in this entire rendering was about 10 hours. So, but it's cool, because I'll just put on a podcast or something like that. I like listening to the dollop, so I'll put on the dollop and, and laugh while I'm painting. Lots of times I'll do some music or something too. Groups like uh, The Bird and the Bee is one of my favorites. Um, you know, stuff that I can just listen to, but I don't have to listen to it. I, I really like. I'm working on the rear center cap now, following my chrome plan. It's all pretty good. Here I'm gonna make that same fix that I did for the front rim. And you can see why it's so important to save your rim paths, especially because you use them, you know? That way I save them, I can come back to them and if I have to make a correction like that or if I wanna change something, I can do that. This is gonna be the wheel well for the rear tire. I'm working on the door handle now. And door handles I, I keep pretty simple. But once again, they, stay, they they follow the same chrome plan. There go my highlights, a little bit on the bottom. It's good to go. These pieces help the, the door handle really sit in there. You want to put some darks in there so that it kind of gives a very recessed look. Here I was searching for the right layer, but now I'm gonna go back and once again, even though I have a style in there, I'm just painting over it, following my chrome plan. Added a little bit of ground here, I'm working on the lenses. I just added a little bit of texture and just kind of, you know, looked at some reference, painted it up. I wanted it to look a little more like glass, so then I got a lighter color to paint over the top of all that, and you'll see that right here, where it almost gives it that highlight reflection. And that color got really rich by adjusting the levels on the base color layer hue and saturation pretty good there's a little piece of that mirror on the inside I want to get that and yeah, we're doing pretty good here I used a photo for the ground but also did some brushwork some adjustments and stuff like that on there so I kind of did that a little bit softened it up just to make it fit. Move my signature, made it white, lowered the opacity.
Now with my pencil layer completely off, I'm just going through and doing some final touches here. Just brushing and cleaning up. And we're gonna add some bling here. Sometimes I like to, to have the bling hot spots. And I was brushing them in um, big like that, just big circles this time, oh, which I thought was kind of cool. Brushing in some, some bling, you know, randomly, but you know, just in certain areas, just kind of thinking about how the light would hit and where would I have a hot spot. Here I noticed there was a little glitch in the the way that the the colors were working on that front fender, so I took care of that. And going back through, following my horizon line and putting in that, that hard white right there, which doesn't have to go all the way across. You just need to indicate it. Same thing there. Yeah, I want one there too. Found the right color, kind of brushed it in. Got just those corners right there. That's good. There we go. There's some more hot spots right there. And as you're going through it, it'll kind of tell you what it wants to be. I see there's some, uh, this is my rubber layer. What I did there was just added a bevel and emboss on the rubber layer so that um, it would all have the same type of light effect on it. Putting in some tread here. And this is the way I do my tread. I'll just kind of draw it in on a black layer. I'll duplicate that layer, fill it white move it down a couple of notches and then knock the black out of that white and it gives you that little that deeper little look see how it adds a little bit of depth to the trim that's we're almost done here a little got some work on my rear view mirror there here I'm gonna do the vents and I just come in and make a selection out of all of them going to fill that shape with my chrome color. I added a little style to it. Right here. And you can get, I mean, you can get chrome styles all over the internet. Just search for chrome style, Photoshop or Photoshop styles, chrome, they're, they're everywhere. They're free. Do I got that in there? Here, I made a layer above everything and I set the layer mode to color. I filled it with the selection that was my body base and that allows me to change colors like this on that layer. I lock the transparency on it and you can do that all day long. But basically, that's it. Came out pretty good. So, thanks for watching. And um, I look forward to doing the next one. The next car, I think, is going to be a Mustang. So, it should be pretty cool. So, stay tuned for that. Other than that, I'm out. Uh, thanks a lot. Bye.